Welcome back to Wolong Fallen Dynasty. In this video, we are going through the best build I have found for ice slash water. And jumping straight into this one, our primary weapon is going to be the Hook Blades of King Helu. And if we take a look at the set bonus, we've got Wisdom and Courage. That is to have the Stalwart Gear, or the Stalwart Tiger Gear. We're going to get bonus stealth, fatal strike damage, which is incredible on this build. And then we are going to get spirit fervor, which is going to increase the spirit gain from attacking. Then we have a dual saber spirit damage, which is 8.5% extra. And you get those bonuses for running every single piece of gear from this set. On the hook blades themselves, they're also known as dual sabers. We have ice attack power, dual sabers damage, and morale rank points gain because you are going to need to have a morale rank of 12 to make use of the wizardry spells. And you'll see a plus nine that these are sitting at a 570 attack power. They scale in water and earth mainly, but there is a little bit of wood in there as well. Then for the secondary weapon, I literally just took another set of dual sabers. Then instead of ranged weapons, we've got a bamboo bow and we've got ice attack power on that. And then we have the fly in general's bow because we've got ice attack power on that as well. Although we're not really going to be using wizardry spells or the ranged weapons, we're going to be focusing on the hook blades. Then for the gear set, we have the Stalwart Tiger gear set. And I've got one piece that's three star. I've got the rest in four star. So I have these at a low upgrade level, the plus three on the footwear. I haven't upgraded them because it's really expensive to upgrade stuff in this game in terms of resource use. And all it really does is boost the defense of the gear. So if you're using this as your primary build, upgrading it is just going to make your defense even better. But that's why I've not bothered with it. But on the pieces of gear, we have ice attack power, damage dealt, damage received. And then the three pieces that are four star, we've also got stealth on all of them. Because this is going to be a like a really highly aggressive sort of build. But you're going to be like trying to be stealthy at the same time. Then if you take a look at the accessories, I've put these on because they both have ice attack power and you're unable to embed different special effects onto accessories. And that's why we have things like heaviness accumulation, toxin resistance and things like that. Then when it comes to the Divine Beast, we have BG, and I, I don't know how to pronounce that one. But with this, you're going to get element imbued weapon damage. So when you enchant your weapon with an element, you're going to get extra damage. Morale rank points gain is going to help you boost your morale faster to use the wizardry spells. Alliance, spirit defense, and positive effect duration. Then when it comes to the wizardry spells themselves, we've got unseeable form. We are able to go invisible to keep up that stealth. Then we have ice weapon. We can enchant our current melee weapon with ice, and that's why we've got ice attack power. And this is primarily a water-based build. Then over on the other side, we've got haste. It's going to increase our movement speed. We can get around the levels faster. And if we're in a bit of trouble, we can just pop the haste wizardry spell, but we can get ourselves out of a sticky situation. And then because there is a little bit of earth in here as well, I've popped on the stone weapon so we can enchant our weapon with stone because with our divine beast, any element we put on a weapon, we're going to get extra damage. I just I couldn't like really think of an extra water based wizardry spell that I wanted to use like one that's going to stick to using melee and trying to be stealthy at the same time. So if we now take a look at the basic stat sheet, you'll see our health is 680. We've got 570 on the main weapon. We've got 400 in the ranged weapon attack power. And then if we look at the virtues, I've put 70 points into water, 25 into earth and 23 into wood. I've got 70 in water because that is the primary virtue you're going to go for on this build. 25 in earth because the weapon does scale a little bit better with earth than what it does with wood. But not only that, leveling up the earth virtue a little bit is going to bring your equipment weight down so that you become more agile. It's going to give you a light equipment load so you can just dodge an infinite amount of times like consecutively without consuming spirit. Then I popped some points into woods because I'm a high level, I'm level 116, and that gives you like a lot more health than any other virtue in the game. But only like keep woods to a small level. You're mainly wanting to focus on water and earth. Then you can see all of these special effect bonuses here. We've got 34 stealth, we've got 136 ice attack power. So that was the build, and now we're going to take a look at the reinforcements I recommend running, and those are going to be Zhao Yun, so you get extra morale rank points gain, and then we're going to take a look at Guan Yu, 
because you receive less damage, which goes with the special effects I've put on the pieces of gear, and when you deflect a critical blow, you're going to restore some health. Out of all of the available reinforcements, those are the two that I believe are going to be best for this sort of a build. So if we just quickly take out a couple of trash mobs, we're going to do exactly the same as what we did in the previous video. So you can see the damage without enchanting the weapon. It's around like 50 to 60 per hit. But then if we come down here and we enchant the weapon with ice, we're getting like an extra 14 and 40 bonus damage because the weapon's enchanted. And you'll see there just how quick you're going to take out like the weaker enemies in the game and then get battered by a fatal strike. And the spirit attack's really cool, as you would have just seen. But not only that, the martial arts attacks are really good with this as well. If I don't get fatal striked again. There we go, take that deflection. So the first martial arts with this. Okay, I'll just do a fatal strike. You can see the damage numbers there. That was 1800 damage. So that's even better than the poison build we took a look at in the previous video. But they have, like, they've obviously got their different uses. This one's going to be melee. That one's keeping your distance until you're using the Molten Calamity Thorn. And then if you come down to these two, put ice on the weapon. And they are both getting battered. Nice and easy to take enemies out. But we're not going to go any further with those enemies. Those are just trash mobs. We're going to head over to, if we use our haste, we can run around faster. We're going to go to, I believe it's called the Fearless Blade. We're going to go take down Zhang Liao. So that was Let's Make Our Armor Shine. And this is the Fearless Blade. They're both in part six. So I'm not showing you against enemies like right at the beginning of the game or anything like that. But let's jump into this one and we are going to take down Zhang Liao. And then when it comes to bosses and this build, especially a boss like Zhang Liao, really, really aggressive. You're not going to get too much time to enchant your weapon. So it's just more focusing on the deflect and working on decreasing that spirit meter. Just because there is so much fatal strike damage when it comes to using this build. And then like right now, we use it and you can see there's over 1700 damage in a fatal strike. And because our equipment weight is so low, if we need to, we can just dodge around the entire arena and we don't consume any spirit doing it. And we've got ourselves another fatal strike. Again, like 17, 1800 damage each time. And then again with another fatal strike, that's nearly 1900 damage there. And then again, another one, and that is Zhang Liao down. So this build is mainly focused on defending yourself and then being really, really aggressive when possible. Fatal strikes are going to deal so much damage. And then just the attack power of the weapons in general is really, really high. So that was a look at the best ice slash water build that I've found so far in Wolong Fallen Dynasty. That is also going to do it for this video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about the game in the comments. And check out this video if you want to see other content on the channel. I will see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.